Right, how about some Ruby News, you guys? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. This actually is pretty low ball for usually what I put in the news, but it was the top post on the Ruby subreddit. Apparently there's a lolcat gem, which doesn't generate lolcat pictures, but it does make your console output really trippy. It does like cascading colors across across lines. So like if you pipe, you know, you know, ls or anything, any text into lolcat, it makes it makes the text crazy colors like this. That is its only purpose. So if you, if you would like uh, all of your console output to be a lot harder to read, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the gem for you. <laughs> to more serious news. Okay, so again, like I usually don't cover software releases because a lot of software gets released, but uh, in this case, I felt like it was special. Uh, Etsy released the Deployinator, a new deployment framework, which if you've been in the Rails community for a while, that's not really a popular thing to do. James Buck wrote Capistrano. And he pretty much sealed the deal. Like that's all. Does anybody in here? Has anybody in here ever used anything other than Capistrano to deploy a Rails app? Get 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 here. So <laughs> so you've used nothing. <laughs> okay. I, I did so, use Blab <coughs> Deployer for about five minutes. And How then we went right back to Capistrano. Because mm -hmm. Blab, I mean, it has the name going for it. <laughs> yeah. Just for for the people that are new, it was amusing. So that was the last time anybody tried to make a deployment framework, and this group of guys got together, a group of jerks got together, and they called themselves the Ruby Hit Squad, and they called James Buck an idiot, and, and wrote Vlad the Deployer. It wasn't really that bad, but they were such jerks about it that no one would use their software. So <laughs> it's just there, mostly incomplete, and way worse than Capistrano now, because a bunch of features have been added. Anyway, so this is Etsy's attempt. Uh, it's interesting, it's a web, based approach, like as a web interface, and they wanted things like they wanted blogging built in and some other things which I'm not sure that I care about, but it's an interesting approach. They also wanted deployment, like they seem to be interested in having their marketers do deploying, so if that's a thing that you're worried about, maybe this is for you. I don't know. New foray. I, I like that they were trying at least. Uh, let's see. Mm. For those of you that are curious about the pictures, if you're new, can anybody actually yeah, see what that is? That. <coughs> Awesome. So, I take the first image from Google Image Search for the news. So, uh, does anybody anybody know what this news item is? Say something with cats. Laser eyes. No, no. So Ruby one nine three. No, no. That's a good one though. Any other takers? Maybe Couch DB. I don't know. Mm -mm. So, <laughs> I'm trying. I feel like it's just a terrible game because this picture has nothing to do with what I with what I searched for. So Peter Cooper decided to stir up a ruckus by posting about how RubyLang.org sucked and was never updated, and um, maybe upset some people. But he was completely right because well, how many people in here have actually gone to the homepage for the Ruby programming language? Recently, who's gone in the last three months? Not because of Peter Cooper. <laughs> uh, just from Google search, just maybe a specific method I'm trying to understand or function. How helpful was it? Not like, it just looks like docs. Right? Okay, so you just went to the docs section. Well, so whatever been... Google returns, whatever <laughs> Google's told me to do it. <laughs> so they had, they really never updated the page in a long time. And so they had like ridiculous links to uh, no name projects that have been deceased for years instead of linking to like Rails. So uh, it's completely updated now, but I believe that this picture would have been more helpful than what was there originally. So I'm glad that he did it. Um, let's see, what else do we have? So hold up. Oh, back up. Yep. So it was updated in response to the uproar? Yeah, pretty much as soon as, uh, shortly after he posted that, everybody that was supposedly like their names were on there, and the, like, the Ruby design team, whatever, they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Really, all it took was for someone to publicly embarrass them. They were very engaged. All right. There's a redo project. Uh, it's actually on the Ruby. GitHub account. Oh, is it? To redo RubyLang.com. Okay. 
so I'm they're working not. on a redo as well. As fixing the little things that they just did. I mean, it's not, even the updates that they did, it's not a bad looking page, just, you know, helps to have content that's actually relevant. Mm -hmm. What well, tells you to install Ruby Gems 0 0.7 or something? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see you try. Is it still, like, is it still on some like PHP CMS? I did not expect anything related to it, actually. Why don't you look into that? The new one's on Jekyll. Hmm? The new one's on Jekyll. Oh, okay. So that GitHub will build it for them. And they don't have to maintain anything. Sounds like a good plan. Um, next. Something to do with Ruby. Yeah, something Ruby. Man, I don't know where you guys are getting that from. Super. Yeah. Potentially Ruby gems. Mm -hmm. Just just Ruby this time. Uh, so two new releases of Ruby. Uh, uh, 192.290 came out. It was pretty much just bug fixes. Anybody here want to use 192? Yes. Wow, okay. It's getting better. Uh, so pretty much just bug fixes. Nothing that exciting there. But uh, 193... Preview 1 also came out, and that had some interesting stuff in it. Specifically, the thing that I, I was surprised by, like, they're touting uh, automatic uh, test unit parallelization, which I really wanted a chance to try, but I didn't have time. Um, and some huge uh, Ruby startup performance improvements from some patches on the mailing list for, for load.c and some other pretty good performance stuff. So if you if you use 192 and you're interested in seeing if you can get more performance, I'd like to hear about it. I don't use 192, but it would be interesting. I'm looking at you, Nate. <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What else is going on? Uh, Amazon finally decided the Ruby was worth noticing. They released an official Ruby gem, so the 37,000 Ruby gems for interacting with their services. Pretty much the only thing that I saw they didn't cover was Amazon Turk. Pretty much everything else. Anybody else have an anybody have an automated Amazon Turk application? No. Anybody? Well, we have some of the time. We have some kind of turk. Really? We got some. Yeah. <laughs> 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 really nice gems. <laughs> it seemed like there were some fairly some fairly robust ones, but. The, the new Amazon gem, like it looks, it looks pretty good. So who in here uses any of the Amazon Ruby gems to do something with Amazon? Nobody. <laughs> Completely. I have S3 stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah S3 is mostly what I use it for. Um, so then it's completely irrelevant to all of you. Um, <laughs> is it better than what's already out there? It, I looked over some of the syntax, mm -hmm. and it looked nice in the sense that uh, they were aiming for a lot of uniformity, so you wouldn't, like, if you were using many of Amazon services, mm -hmm. you'd be configuring it once in a lot of senses, or in the same way in a lot of senses. So, it'll be at least an upgrade there. So, does it cover the product advertising API? I do not know. The list was I quite long so. of what it did cover. I believe so. It does? I mean, is, it, cool. is, is it aimed at the Amazon store, or... The Amazon Cloud web services. Yeah, yeah more, more towards the cloud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, then, yeah, we're going to use that. Okay. <laughs> we, we got a lot of S3 stuff. So. Okay. There you go. Does it have a CLI or is it just the, um, just the gem to use? It looked, it looked, it looked, I didn't see any CLI, just the gem. Could you just do a presentation right now on this gem? Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> we're all uh, I, I, no. Could you put one together while I'm presenting and then give it afterwards? There you go. M maybe. I don't want to steal the semi precious gems from Nate, though. So Nate, Nate wanted to start working on a presentation right now on it. I, mm, half an hour is just not enough time to get angry about that. Maybe it really sucks. You don't know. Well, if you sit on that side of the room, the internet will be choppy enough that no matter what you use, it'll be annoying. Yeah, well, I want to be. I want, I want the anger to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Late season. Next time. Uh, also, this was interesting. Uh, hey, who in here uses continuous integration server of any kind? Some people. What do you guys use? Jenkins. Jenkins. Team City. What's it? Team City. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jenkins. Okay. So this is Jenkins. Finally, versus their their JRuby branch. 
is the goal of being able to write Ruby plugins for Jenkins. So if you do use Jenkins or if you use Hudson and you'd like to switch to Jenkins, uh, I don't know, I think Jenkins is pretty easy to set up, but I'm excited about being able to, to modify it with, with Ruby. So I don't know. I know they've been working on that for a while, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Eli just came online. <laughs> uh, yep, that's all I got. What did I miss? Java 7. <laughs> What's that? Java 7, JRuby Invoke Dynamics. Oh. Um, no, not at all. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, Wait, what was, the, what was it again? What was the feature? Open JDK 7 actually went GA, and Invoke Dynamic is baked into the master branch of JRuby, which means that you're talking, I mean, in some places, 300, 400% speed increase, and on average across the platform, 40%. I mean, wow. you might be interested in that. If you're using JRuby. You use JRuby. JRuby is... <laughs> <coughs> what? <laughs> not polite company. Java 7 does have some, some problems, though, that I'm sure will get cleaned up in a point release, but uh, it has some real compile issues with certain code. Yes. Yeah, the standard we see in Apache stuff has been cycled around, but those have already been fixed by the hotspot. Oh, it has? Yeah. Good. 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 So that's already, that's already on course. Cool. So if you use JRuby, you should check that out. Like me. <laughs> uh, what else did I miss? Also, if you're new and you are doing like Rails for Zombies, they announced that they're having a Rails for Zombies resurrection, adding on a bunch more training. Oh, that's it's really not cool. Not out yet, but they're sending out announcements about it. How many people in here have done the, the Rails for Zombies stuff? What, what's Rails for Zombies? Um, it's a series of tutorials for people that are trying to get new, uh, get used to Rails and learn about it. Uh, they're free, I think. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't actually checked them out. Somebody who's actually done them yeah. will say. Pretty small units of work, yeah. Very small units of work? That's yeah. a bonus. And fun videos. Of zones. <laughs> it's a plus. Did you compare that to like, uh, like peep code casts on getting up speed of Rails? Kind of. I think it's way better than the peep code. I mean, it's interactive. Yeah. interactive. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to spend like five hours beating your head in trying to understand how to get Rails to run on your machine. Dude, where's the fun in that? And they do have if you, they do have like paid for learning lessons, and you if you buy it, they're running a promotion. If you buy it, you do get a free peep code podcast as well, or video cast, whatever. Okay. That's part of the deal. That's pretty cool. Um, I didn't cover any local news. Did anybody like release any gems or anything like that? Nope. That's all she wrote, folks. Thanks.